One of the most common objections to the Christian faith is how do we know who wrote the Gospels? Are they eyewitnesses? And if they are eyewitnesses, can we trust them? Well, what does popular atheist agnostic Bart Ehrman say about this? Question number four. Do the Gospels contain eyewitness tradition? When I was a Bible-believing evangelical Christian uh, attending Moody Bible Institute, before I began my serious scholarship on the New Testament, before I began to read it in Greek, and before I saw what serious scholars of the world had to say about it, I was absolutely convinced that the Gospels not only contained eyewitness tradition, but that they were written by two eyewitnesses, Matthew and John, and by two people who were close companions to people who were eyewitnesses, Mark and Luke. Intense research has a way of changing your mind about things. Well, there you have it. You heard him. He says that intense study has a way about changing your mind on these things. Well, that's very subjective. And when we actually look at the authorship of John itself, we should, we should really look at two evidences. One would be internal evidence and the second would be external evidence. And I'll begin by reading from John's writings themselves. And I'll start with John's epistle. And the reason why I start with John's epistle is because most biblical scholars will agree that in John's epistle, he's pointing back to the events of the gospel writing itself. For example, he writes in, John, uh, in 1 John 1, 1, he writes these words, that which, that which was from the beginning we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes and which we have looked at with our hands and have touched. Now, if he's not an eyewitness, why is he claiming to have seen these things with his own eyes? Why is he claiming to have touched these things with his own hands? Why is he claiming to have heard these things with his own ears? Well, you can only see something, touch something and hear something if he was actually there at the time. So I think from John's epistle, he's pointing back to the events of the gospel and saying that he was in fact actually there because he saw, touched and heard these things himself. Now, if we continue reading in John's gospel itself, there are multiple places you can look at to really draw the conclusion that the writer must have actually been there because otherwise he wouldn't have known these things. For example, in John chapter 11, verse 38 to 48, he talks about the burial of Lazarus. Now, he describes the events quite accurately, how the Jews at that time would have buried their dead and how they would have prepared them for, the, for uh, the burial. So he describes these events quite accurately, which would presuppose he must have been there at the time. So therefore, he couldn't have been someone many years later writing, you know, back in time, as it were, because he describes the events accurately, how these burial customs were at the time. So therefore, this must have been someone there at the time to describe the events that happened so accurately. But let's continue reading. If we go to John chapter 1, verse 39, the author seems to have insider knowledge. He seems to have insider knowledge because, well, just take a listen. In verse 39 of chapter 1, Come, he replied, and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying, and they spent that day with him. It was about four in the afternoon. Now, the author, the gospel author here says that it was about four in the afternoon and that these people spent the day with Jesus. Now, how would he know that they spent the day with Jesus unless he was there? And more importantly, how would he have known what time it was when they got there unless he was actually there himself? Because if he wasn't there, there was no way to determine, especially not in those days, what time it was when somebody arrived in another location, which would presuppose he must have been at that location with Jesus to record accurately what time they got there. Now let's continue reading in uh, John chapter 6, verse 19. The author of John even knew how many miles they had travelled in the boat. Now, let me ask this. If he wasn't an eyewitness, if he wasn't there at the time of the events, how would he know how this group of Jews in this particular patch of water, how would he know how many miles they had travelled unless he was actually there? Because it does say in verse 19, when they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus approaching the boat. Now, how do you know that it's three or four miles if he wasn't there? It would presuppose that the author must have been there to know how many miles they had travelled in the boat before they saw Jesus. It would presuppose the author was actually an eyewitness to this event. In chapter 1, verse 14, it says these words, 
The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son from the father, full of grace and truth. Now notice the key part there. We have seen his glory. Now, you can't claim to be an eyewitness if you haven't seen the event. But he says we have seen. So therefore, he's claiming to be an eyewitness. Only an eyewitness can see the events take place. He says we have seen. Not they have seen, not somebody else has seen, we have seen. So he's claiming there to be an eyewitness. I'll finish in John's Gospel with the internal evidence in chapter 21, verse 24. Now, to give you the context here, this is where Peter is told something by Jesus. And then Peter says, well, Lord, what about this disciple over here? And he points to the disciple that Jesus loves. And Jesus said to him, what's that to do with you? If I want this disciple to live until I return, that's none of your business, is basically what he said. Now, it goes on to say in verse 24, this is the disciple who testifies to these things and who has written them down. And we know that his testimony is true. Why do we know his testimony is true? Well, as it says, this is the disciple who has written these things down. So we can see there from the beginning to the end of John's gospel, this is clearly an eyewitness who wrote these things down, especially in John chapter 21, the evidence is so strong. This is the disciple, it says. So we can see it is a disciple. Whether it's John or not, we can see it is in fact a disciple who wrote these things down. Now, to the point to the external evidence, we need to look to someone who knew someone who would have at least known John. And we have that in church history. We have that with the early church fathers. For example, St. Irenaeus writes in his writings that the author of the fourth gospel was John. He says that John wrote the gospel of John. Now, why is Irenaeus's opinion so important? Because he was a disciple of a man named Polycarp. And Polycarp's very important. Polycarp was a disciple of John himself. So Polycarp was only one person removed from Jesus and Irenaeus was one person removed from John. So it's clear to see that Irenaeus would have learnt this information from his mentor, which was Polycarp, and Polycarp would have learnt this information from his mentor, which was John himself. And John simply recorded the things that his mentor done, which was, of course, Jesus Christ. So when we look at the external evidence and the internal evidence, they both point to an eyewitness disciple named John who wrote these things down because he was there with Jesus and he recorded these things so that you may believe and that I may believe. Mm -hmm.